In this video, I'm going to do a quick review of Juan Park's Dala Origami book. In this video, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the models that are in the book. I will show you a photograph so that you can get a good idea of what the final product will look like. I will give you a sneak peek to the inside of the book so you can see the instructions and how they're laid out. In this video, I may give you one or two hints on how to help you get through a folded project. However, I will not be giving any tutorials in this particular video. If you need any specific helps, please leave a comment in the comment section and I will get a video out as soon as I can. Please check the description area underneath the video for I will be putting links to help videos for these models as soon as they are created. And the book is packaged in this nice box kit, which comes with obviously the book and some practice sheets of dull origami paper, which I'll get to in a moment. It also comes with a pre-folded example of what the butterfly looks like using some of the sample currency. As you can see from the sample fold butterfly that comes with the kit, the practice origami dollars are printed in very close approximation of a US dollar. Unfortunately, the dollars are not double-sided, so the models that use the markings on the back side of the bill will not really benefit from using practice dollars. One of the other problems with the practice dollars is that they are not printed on paper that is anywhere near as tough or durable as US dollars, and there is a good chance that you will rip these practice dollars doing any of the models in the book. So while it's a nice gesture, it's not really all that helpful. An interesting thing to note, however, is that the sample butterfly that comes with the kit, which uh, is really not designed to be taken out, you pretty much have to rip the kit apart to get to it. For some reason, that dollar is printed double-sided, whereas the dollars that come in the kit are not. And now, on to the book. One of the really nice things about this book is that it is bound in a spiral, which makes it extremely easy to lay flat so that while you are going through the models, you can easily reference it and you don't have to keep holding down the page. You can even fold it backwards so that you can concentrate only on the page that you need without taking up a whole lot of desk space. Another very nice thing about this book is that it includes a photo of the finished model, which is very helpful when you are stuck on a step and you need something to reference. Many times a photo of the finished model helps immensely uh, when trying to complete a tricky step. The illustrations are very clear and uh, very easy to follow. They are printed in green and black with uh, white denoting the front side of the bill, the green the back side of the bill, and the black instructions. For the most part, they're ext it's extremely easy to follow, and it is very well laid out. And now we come to the contents of the book. The book contains 10 models, and the models range in difficulty from intermediate to advanced. One thing to keep in mind is that you should not be afraid to make notes in the book as you go along. This can help you greatly when you go back to refold the model that may have given you some difficulty the first time around. Once you've overcome the difficult part, figured out what it is you need to remember, if you write it down, you'll be sure that you'll not have to go through that whole process. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking, oh, I've done it once, I'm, I'm sure I'll remember what I did. Uh, that's not always the case. So don't be afraid to make notes in the book. The first model in the book is the double crane. It's a fairly straightforward model, uh, the one thing to keep in mind is that this has what I call opposite side instructions. In other words, if you were to fold the model as the instructions indicate, starting with the white side up, you would wind up with a green side model. However, the photo shows a white side model. So keep that in mind when doing this particular model, that if you want to achieve the result that is shown in the picture, you need to start with the green side up. Otherwise, uh, the double crane is an intermediate level model. Um, it's one of the simpler ones in the book, but it's still not something that a beginner would be able to do right away. The next model in the book is the crab. This is a difficult model. 
And one of the things you have to do to start is divide the bill into five equal sections. Now, of course, the quickest way to do that is to measure it. And I've done that for you. And if you just want to mark out every 1.22 inches, you will get very close to exact fifths. And that will uh, help you greatly. After that, the folding process is fairly straightforward, if a little cumbersome as you are folding many layers on top of each other. The next model in the book is the camera. Now the camera is also an intermediate level model. And one thing to note is there is a slight variation in the final photo uh, shown in the book and the actual model that you will fold using the directions. It is a minor uh, difference, but one to make note of, especially if you're wondering why your model doesn't look exactly like the picture. It's because the instructions are slightly different than the method used to get the model shown in the photo. And the, uh, the difference being the height of the camera body in relation to the front edge of the camera. As you can see in this photo, the instructions describe a process will, which will give you a shorter camera body, giving the front edge of the camera a little bit higher than the body. Whereas as you can see in the photo of the finished product in the book, the body goes to the very top of the edge of the um, very top of the front edge of the camera. Now you can easily, with a f just a, m a minor adjustment, make the body the size that it is in the photo. My guess as to why there's difference is that if you make the body go all the way to the top, like in the finished photo, there is very little tuck to hold the camera together. The lock is not very sturdy. So if you shorten that up like the directions show, you will get a slightly sturdier camera, but it will not look exactly like you see in the photos. A couple other things to note that um, might help you as you go through the model is that in step two, I would recommend that you make those mountain folds. Personally, I have found that makes the model a little bit easier to finish. In the same way, on step six, I suggest you make those valley folds, even though they are shown as mountain folds in the instructions. And step seven should be a mountain fold and not a valley fold. The other suggestion that I would make when folding this model is to take step 40, in which you are folding the levers and buttons and flash for the camera. You would take step 40, and you would insert that right after you complete step 33. The reason I suggest you do that is because if you fold these in the location that they have them in the instructions, you are folding them when you've already created a 3D model of the camera, and it can be difficult to really set these creases while you're fiddling with a completed model. Whereas if you fold them right after step 33, the model is still flat, and it's easier and less cumbersome to fold those. The next model that we have in the book is the butterfly. Now the butterfly is an intermediate model. It's probably one of the easier ones to do in the book. Uh, this model is also what I, I call the opposite side instructions. In other words, the photo shows a white side model, whereas if you follow the instructions, you wind up with a green side model. So if you would like to get a result that looks like the photo, you will need to start with the white side up, not the green side up. One thing to watch out for when folding the butterfly model is that it's extremely easy to rip the bill down the center line between the eyes when doing the final folding. So just make sure that you pay special attention to that area so that you do not rip the bill. The next model in the book is the frog and I consider that to be a difficult level model. The instructions are well done. It just requires you to do some swivel folds on small areas of the paper, fold through several layers, and it can be a little difficult and frustrating if you're not used to working with small models. If you follow the instructions, you will come up with a white side model, as in the photo. However, I wonder why a frog was not made green by using the back side. So for this model, I recommend going ahead and starting with the green side up so that you wind up with a green frog. And this model also works really well with a $2 bill, which has a much uh, greener reverse side. The next model in the book is the penguin. And the penguin is the first model in this book 
that uses the swirl illustrations on the reverse side of the bill to create the eyes for the model. The penguin is a, a, a very nice little model and it is, I consider, an intermediate level model. The next model in the book is the eagle. The eagle is a difficult level model and it is also an opposite side model, meaning that the final photo shows a white side model, but if you were to follow the instructions, you would wind up with a green side model. So just keep that in mind when choosing your orientation. The next model in the book is the shark. And the shark is also a difficult level model. Now the author has created a beginning variant instruction set that allows you to create a hammerhead shark. And you can check the description area below the video for link so you can get those instruction variants so you can create the shark that is in the book and you can also create the hammerhead shark. The next model in the book is the scorpion. The scorpion is by far the most difficult model in this book. It has some very difficult steps to work through and so it is definitely a advanced level model. This also happens to be one of my favorite models in the book. So despite its difficulty level, I encourage everyone to give it a try and make use of the various help videos available for this model. The last model in the book is the koi fish. The koi fish is an advanced level model and is perhaps one of the most famous dollar origami models that has been created. This model uses the scroll work on the back of the bill in order to create the eyes on the model and requires the folder to be very precise and patient when making the folds for the scales. In my opinion, the koi fish is the number one dollar origami model available. So I highly encourage the, everyone to try it and there, are, and there are many, many video resources available to you to help you along this difficult model. I wish you all the luck and I'll see you next time.